Hello everybody, Tom Matuska again from Spirit Lake, Iowa with Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company Live Thursday afternoon. And we have a nice day today. Started out a little bit rainy. Um, I think I saw some bunch of people kind of just dancing down the street, you know, and I said, what's going on there? They said, it's farmers. You know, the farmers oh. are just as giddy with how their yep. crops are looking. It's looking pretty it's good up here. It's rained. Um, haven't had any disastrous weather anyway, so um, yeah. so far so good. It's great for them. Nah. Um, if you've been with us for the last, uh, um, oh man, so are we on seven? And we must be on like six or seven sessions, seven, with uh, the smallmouth project. And the whole thing was showing you um, how to use, and I'd say the proper use of heads and fins, but I. I <laughs> Anything that I do probably isn't proper, so it's a uh, way to use artificial heads and fins on this smallmouth. So we did a little demonstration on that. And uh, um, earlier, Brett, in one of the, I don't know, first or second ones, you showed them um, how to use a head like yep. that yep. on a carved body. And you can use them on carved bodies, bought in bodies. Um, yep. Some of them are meant for reproduction fish, and the company's actually... Um, sell the heads separate, yeah. uh, which is in the case of that one, which doesn't have a throat, and you built a beautiful little throat in there, yeah, and it? looks pretty convincing oh, yeah. for me. I know I see a <laughs> crawdad pincher coming right out of that throat there. Uh, and uh, so there's lots of different ways. Why don't you kind of go through some of these products that we've been playing with and um, show them what's available and yeah, why we'd well, use them, I guess. Well, we had chosen to use an artificial head for a smallmouth bass, um, for a smallmouth bass project, which was this one all completed, but we started all the way back at the skinning process. So we, we measured the head, and we got some really good measurements, the length, we've got a width and a height. We went to a catalog and found the best, the best head for our project. Um, we also wait, wait, chose wait. to use- You gotta look at this nice throat. <laughs> Look at that. Even when, you use, even when you use the real head, a lot of yeah. times we'll cut those out between the gills, the membrane between the gills, yep. and you make a really nice throat. <laughs> um, and, that, and that we did because um, the head that we chose to use for this particular fish doesn't have a, a, a back of the throat because it's included on the reproduction. So um, we showed you how to use a piece of square stock, and as you saw in the, when we showed you the throat, you could see that little receiver piece right there, the female end. Um, and this is just a nice way, certainly not the only way, but it's a nice way to attach a head because we can take it on and off. It's gonna index exactly where it goes. It's not gonna wallow out that foam, um, which happens sometimes in the softer carving foams. Um, if you use just round wires, uh, we can, taking it on and off several times, you end up augering out the hole and then eventually um, your head doesn't fit exactly the same. By doing it this way, um, that head is gonna fit exactly in the same place every time. And we can do a lot of our finish work or we can minimize our finish work, I would say, by, by joining this seam and then we'll have just a crack there and we can take the head off and, and paint and match the skin and then um, and I've seen you that use that copper pedestal attachments. Yep, yep. Um, used it for pedestal fish attachments. We've used it for, um, you could use it great in bird work. Um, it's just a really nice system for um, detachable parts where we want them to go back together into exactly the same place. The square stock um, keeps things from spinning and works out very well. Um, James Caldwell would like to know if you add gills. Oh, we did. We did, yeah. Um, and so did gills can be ordered, um, and they come with, uh, from several different companies. Um, these gills are very, this is a nice set of gills up underneath. Um, especially when we have a real wide open head like this, you definitely want to add the gills. Um, but uh, we like this is real nice. Subtle, we, mm -hmm. we mount a lot of fish subtle and kind of a natural swimming pose. Yes. Yep. But, but a big head shaker of a bass, you can really pop those gills open. And then you got a lot of work inside the mouth and behind yes, you do. too. Yes, you do. And uh, artificial gills work really well. Um, 
And again, it's one less piece that you have to deal with on the inside sure. of the mouth, sure, deal sure, with sure. the shrinkage and so forth. So um, in addition to artificial heads, um, we also went over using artificial fins. Um, and the, Somebody the heated that one up to too order. hot with that heat yeah. gun, didn't they? <laughs> this one got a little more flex than, it, than the plastic would withstand. But um, artificial fins, how to choose them, um, again, according to measurement of your fish, oftentimes they're done by weight. Uh, there's, there's not really a length measurement on those, but um, your artificial fins and why you would use them. Um, this was, this is just a, a northern pike, uh, pectoral fins from a northern that you can see this is what was brought in and, and it's in pretty rough shape. That fish was mounted and... Uh, we have another big one on has, the shelf to do like that too. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And um, that's going to be an old restoration project. That'd be a fun thing to do for them sometime too. They're probably getting tired of fish. I uh, gotta be. <laughs> um, but this fish had been in the freezer for for a while, and what's a while um, now? This fish, this is a shop fish, but it's been in the freezer for quite a while. Twelve years? I yeah, on the conservative side, I would say over yes. twelve. Um, yeah, I think that had been in there for quite a while, and it, and during that time, it hadn't. This one wasn't wrapped quite as well, um, and it had incurred some damage, and we don't know if that was from. Um, prior to coming in or if it in happened on the shelf. I think but, on the shelf. Um, <laughs> the Incurred damage is the same thing as the fins were got broke. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, so it had a broken tail and a few things. So it was a really good candidate for this. And um, you can see Tom had ordered a set here, given it some really nice action, showed you how to do that, um, heat them, cool them, um, and shape them the way that you like. And he's done that with this fish and um, has just done some, some fun things with artificial fins. And now that, it's, that we're this far along, you can't tell either the artificial head or the artificial fins. And they're all in really good condition, nice shape, and look like a na nice, natural, healthy fish. Now, I could see why you'd want to use an artificial fin, because this one was messed up, the fins were pretty bad, and that northern were pretty bad, and we got one on the shelf that's real bad. We have a walleye up here that uh, they broke oh, the yes. fin bad, yeah. we need to fix that. Um, what about heads? Why would you use a head? Why would, what's the point? Um, artificial heads are a great answer for efficiency, time and efficiency, so there's a tremendous amount of rebuilding that has to be done to properly use the real head, which we, we do often, and you've probably seen in the background behind us, there's several fish back there. Um, many of those have the real head, but we spend a tremendous amount of time rebuilding all of the shrinkage that occurs in those. Um, there's also, um, I think there's some efficiencies in the amount of work that it takes to get all of the meat out of the cheek, out of the, the skull behind the head, and, and preserve the real head so there's some time some time saved there too. So by using an artificial head, we don't we save all of the time of removing all of that material and uh, rebuilding it later with shrink, rebuilding the shrinkage later. So now, are there good heads out there? Are all artificial heads good heads? So if I just find something that fits, I'm I'm in business. Every company makes a different head and has a different style to those heads. Some of them, as as you mentioned, will include a throat, some don't. If you want to rebuild, then um, you can use some from the companies that, that um, sell reproduction fish. They'll have, a, they'll have an opening here that you can rebuild the, the back of the throat to. Um, some, some companies have the throat included. Some of them are different shapes. Um, there are great ones and there are good ones. Um, I'd say order a few and kind of get yourself familiar with the different companies. We carry a tremendous, a tremendous artificial head from Gary Bruck um, that we really favor. He's pretty good and, at this, isn't he? Uh, that's what I hear. We make a lot of, uh, <laughs> yeah. we make a lot of silicone molds and a lot mm -hmm. of artificial parts, so I know what he must go through, yes. and his yep. product continues to you know, impress me every time yeah. I look at one. Absolutely, there's one right back there. That we didn't have a size for this, so we got this from Waters by Klaus. Yep, yep. Um, so that Peter Johnson and Steve Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, tremendous, tremendous, yeah. tremendous heads. Um, they're not all the same. 
um, but so, the companies that we've worked with. So when you we find one, stick lives. with it. Yes. And, yep. And you were on vacation this week, weren't you? Ish. Ish. And I was a working vacation. Vacationing in Nebraska. You know what you missed? <laughs> no. Tell me. Acai day. Oh. Hey. You acai day. Acai day. And the, we missed the ice cream man today. Ooh. And what happened? In the, in the feminizing of America, they, <laughs> feminizing. we are now eating acai, and we used to have Rocky Mountain Oyster feeds, a beer and a Rocky Mountain Oyster feed, and now we have <laughs> acai feeds. You, know? you might have to right? explain what that is. What is it? It's a bowl of fruit and ice cream with oats on top. You think it's ice cream? I don't think it's ice cream. It's sorbet. I think it's sorbet. That's all the French I know. Sorbet. <laughs> Zorbe do you do, buddy? <laughs> it's very good. It is very good. I missed it. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't here. You missed it. I did miss it. I um, did miss it. Big old bowl of berries and fruit and cereal. And sorbet. And <laughs> Lori Bell would like to know if you used any pearl X or pan pastels in finishing the fish. I was looking at this fish. This Tell me what you think of that fish. You did. That is very nice. Okay. I really like Look that. Look at the picture on the screen that the people are getting. This looks like a carp. <laughs> no. You need to brighten up my colors. No, I'm kidding. I'm no. kidding. Don't mess with it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, we used Perlex. Uh, no, I didn't use any Perlex. We used um, liquid scales mm -hmm. um, and a Createx yeah. liquid yeah. scales. Um, I bet you use some pan pastels. You like to use pan pastels I in did. the pins. And I, I'm kind of wishy-washy, whatever I have out here. And I think, ooh, that'll work good. And then something didn't work, and I try something else. And um, after doing this for for a, a long time, um, a while is right, um, these new products come out, and my mind is just swimming um, with all the different products. So that's why we do this to so you don't have to swim in the head. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so today, um, what we're going to do is we're going to gloss this fish, mm -hmm. but it's going to be difficult to gloss the fish and put in. We selected this artificial rock driftwood habitat piece. Um, we can't gloss him, wait for him to dry, put him on there. So in the essence of time, mm -hmm. we are going to remove him from his stand, show you how to do that. We're going to, I've already drilled a hole through that rock, I'm going to nestle him up to that um, rock. Kind of watching you on the other screen is kind of funny because you're laughing when it's not a funny time. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of a delay. And just, I'm confused. Just a little bit. Um, so we're going to put him on here. We're going to fasten the fish on. If all looks good, we're going to take a lightweight trash bag, wrap our wood. Yep. We're going to use our new Max 2000 clear yep. spray, and we're going to gloss him while he's on his on his wood, and I think it'll yeah. go pretty good. We're going to snap a before and after picture of this fish for your gloss. Better picture than your before. camera's giving, just for tomorrow. What if it looks the same? Going. What if it looks the same? Just keep going. Holy smokes, you got more stuff hanging off that phone. <laughs> That's a lot. Just keep talking. <laughs> OK. Uh, I can't keep talking. i got to have the fish. Um, so we'll gloss. We'll put him on driftwood. We'll gloss him for them today. And then um, are we going to be done finally? We got to be done with this fish. These poor yeah. people. Um, we start out with, I don't know, 7,000 viewers. And then all of a sudden <laughs> it goes to 5,000. Then it goes, now we're down to about 20. So you can yeah. tell you're losing people as we go. Um, OK, so to start with, remember this stand. We had people calling in asking us about the stand. Um, if, you're, if you do fish, we used to mount all fish on a board, yes, and we would did. prop up the tails, and we'd prop up the heads, and you could never get, get any symmetry on the bottom of the fish yeah. because you mounted them flat down. Um, it wasn't until I think Brian Hellman came here, and he said, why do you do that? Why don't you stick them, you know? And I think he did a wire or a bolt or something. I don't yeah. remember what, but he put them on a stand, and we've been doing stands for quite a while. Okay. But We've had people call in and asking how big our stands are and all this kind of thing. Um, it's any piece of scrap you have. This is, if, you, if you have a big chunk of plywood, just cut it into you know, strips. You're going to need bigger yeah. ones for bigger fish. You're going to need smaller ones for smaller fish. You don't want to worry about them tipping over. The weight of the fish, put your, put your upright weight to the back 
so you don't have to worry about the weight of the fish. He's not going to come this way. The weight of the fish is holding him that way. Um, I use these stands for sometimes I'll write names on there. Sometimes I practice my airbrushing on there. They're just kind of handy. Um, sometimes we get so many stands here oh, that we have to take them apart and store them in boxes. And then yeah. when fish time comes around, we start assembling stands. Yeah. But to hold this together, there's just a couple screws, maybe three. There's three little screws down there. Two will do it. Yeah. And that's just a two by two. So split yourself a, a two by four and cut yourself a whole bunch of pieces. Yeah. They're real easy to make, but nothing's nicer when you're working on a fish than to be able to work around him like that. Now, today I needed to do something with him and I couldn't, didn't like the angle I was getting. I just screwed this right on the mounting stand with the yeah. whole plate on and everything that worked really well. So we're gonna take him off. Now the two screws um, held him together. I don't need to take out both, both of them. Now these wires are very heavy, and this is annealed wire, and I'm just going to straighten it up, try to get it as straight as I can, according to what the fish is. Could you hold him just like yeah. that a minute? Let's see if we can feed him out of there. And go to power tools. This is the power right there. <laughs> there we go. Now, now we're going to see. I pre-drilled this hole. Can you hold that while I show them what I did here? You go out on the highway and start spinning that like a sign. <laughs> you know, that highway business isn't all it's cracked up to be. First of all, two examples. One is our for sale, our hiring sign out there. Yeah. We have a hiring sign. We do have a hiring sign. Um, we are hiring people if you want And to it is a <laughs> giant hiring sign. This thing's got to be 12 feet tall. It's great big. Flaps in the wind, you know. It's a gorgeous big red yellow sign. And uh, I mean, it's been up for two months, month and a half. Um, you had one person see it come in? Yeah. Maybe. Um, that was <laughs> one example. The other example we did, when Tull Yoakum was here, we mounted a gigantic, monstrous elk pedestal. Two elk, two bugling, or one elk's bugling, the other one's there. You know, these are big, massive six by six bulls. And we thought, it, on big walnut base, habitat galore, we thought, people have to see this. We've got to put it out by the highway. Our highway is 100 yards that way, maybe, you know, not quite. And we carried the whole thing out, assembled it right on the sidewalk at the highway. Not one comment. So your sign is not going to work. <laughs> Just say <laughs> OK. Um, stick him through that little hole there if you'll go. I might have to help him for you. Oh, look at that. Ooh, that's not going to be bad. Ooh, what do you think? I think that's going to be nice. I'm going to bend. The nice thing is you could flip that completely upside down, the driftwood too. Oh, I absolutely. did that. And a little bit. Um, hold that. This is how easy this is. My Bob Father mounting stand, stick him on there now. See if you like that better. Which way you like it? Let's do it the other way. Was that like, yeah, take them off. So many options. So many options. Pretty versatile piece, though. What is this small mouth? Three and a half pounds? Weight-wise, maybe four? Six, six oh, when I caught oh, him. Oh, wait, wait. I caught mm. him as an easy six. OK, I like to hide my rod, so I'm only going to have like a quarter inch showing. I got to clear my fins. Um, I did not put the pectoral fin on the back side because I'd probably bust it off. So as far as realistic taxidermy, this is in not it. Do it look okay? Looks beautiful. Okay, now, now, if I can turn this and then have you still hold him, mm -hmm. and I can show him how I treat this back. Oops, I forgot to make my whole trench, you know what? 
Oh. Pick him off once I'm going to. Thank you. Um, now, I made a spade bit hole back here for to bury my wire. I'm, I'm going to leave probably two inches of wire back there. So I'm going to extend my, extend my trough. We'll go one more to be safe. That was the part you didn't want to hear on the camera, wasn't it? I did it three times. OK, stick that baby back through there. Um, I used to dread, I used to dread um, putting fish on wood. It's just the biggest mm -hmm. hassle until we started doing this, and it works really well. Um, now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, you good back there? We've got a little bit of space. Yeah. I'm going to bend this wire down. Now, what works really good at this point is a, um, I have a rod, I mean a pipe, about this big quarter-inch yeah. pipe. You can stick that quarter-inch pipe on there and bend it really neatly. I'm going to snip the excess wire. Make sure you got enough because when it's gone, we don't glue wire together. Now, I'm going to take a little bitty wrench. Uh, let me get this one. A little bitty wrench like this. I'm going to stick it up in here. And if you can make sure he doesn't creep in, mm -hmm. I'm going to bend that. Now you gotta get your wrench out. Um, but that's a big aid to me in fastening those wires. Is that gonna work? Mm hmm. Tell me the perks of using an artificial wood compared to the wheel. Well, we buy a lot, a lot of driftwood. And we sometimes have giant, giant bins of driftwood. And even though we have all this driftwood for a fish like this, I can go down and I can spend an hour picking out one piece of driftwood. Yes. It, it just, I always do. And I'll find one, then I'll find a better one, then I'll find another one. So the n nice thing for me is I've used all these now I like to sink these in far enough so that it's flush. Before I ever give it to the customer, I take auto body putty, putty, I fill that in. As soon as it gels, I take our rasp, 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 and sand it off, and it's nothing but a patch. And it works real good. Um, we like it. It's, we like the pieces that we can use. It's lightweight. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of big musky and northern reproductions, and you get a fish. Some of those reproduction fish end up oh, being, um, phew, am I exaggerating by saying 18, 20 pounds of big, big 50-inch oh, musky? Not at all. Not and at all. Um, that, on top of a little piece of driftwood, doesn't work for a fish like that. It, we usually have to put pieces and pieces and pieces together, and um, that's why artificial so nice. This whole piece of driftwood probably weighs three pounds or so. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, I know something will happen if I try to do this, but say you want this fish going up. I'll bet you I can bend that wire gently and softly, and that fish can be going up. Customer says, I really like him, but I wanted to see his teeth more. Not a problem, buddy. <laughs> Take that old fish and we move his head out like this. You know, that's, it's just real easy to do. What if he says he wants a table mount with both sides painted? <laughs> we're going to get a table and we're going to stick this in it. <laughs> okay. Do you like that? You're a small yeah. mouth guy. Now, what if we wanted to add some more rocks to that? Oh, we do that's that? a very good point, young man. <laughs> I have at my disposal, how many of these we got? We got four, four different, different clusters. Yep. Um, these, are, these are the ones we drive over. If you want to see um, mm -hmm. an interesting video, Mandy and I had a steak dinner bet that I could drive over these. I probably wouldn't drive over this one because they're connected together. But one rock with my big truck, and I did it, didn't I? You did do it. I never got my steak dinner supper. You're busy chasing a car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now if I wanted more rocks, say you got 
you want more here, you want another fish, and this, you like this, but it's just not going to do it. Um, I would lay this on a flat surface, like on the table, pick out a rock formation or wood, and lay it on the table and slide it around until you get something that you think would look nice. If that was what I wanted to do, I would take, we use a lot of uh, torque head screws, uh -huh. and I'd take like a five inch torque head screw. I would find where the rocks touch, like right there, and way up in here, or in the back, wherever you can, it's gonna take about two or three screws to fasten to these, and then I'll see how my attachment is. If it's real wobbly, I may come in with some auto body putty, patch it, yeah. you know, put a little moss yeah. to cover your screw heads. Um, but these are, these are, you could even mount a little bluegill cluster on that. Yeah, you could put absolutely. this on a table. Would that yep. not look kind of neat with a little yep. bird on or bobcat pedestal or something like that? Um, Dave wants to know if these videos are saved somewhere that they can rewatch them, and they are. You can either go to our Facebook video library, or you can also go to YouTube, and all of our videos that we've ever done are all on there. Um, are we ready? Yeah. Should we gloss a little? I think we should. Do you want to show them? Do you want to put any? I think I'll do it after. On it? Well, no, I can do it now, can I? Yeah. That'd be a good thing to do. Okay, here's another product. Now, somebody made the comment a while back that our, our lives have turned into kind of an infomercial and all these products we're just trying to sell <laughs> things. Well, we are, but everything we sell, we use, That's don't we? Right. I mean, we and use everything it. we use, we sell. And we, li it, we don't. Mm -hmm. This is by far one of my favorite habitat pieces, and I try to sell it to you, and you thank me forever. I probably, <laughs> that's probably the number one thing that goes off, and the other day I had four people get artificial driftwood, and those branches were on every I love them. and I was just yeah. like, oh my gosh, They're I thought it was the same so order. Easy. So, so, yep. so, I like this, to use this stuff, and I had a person bring me a whole lot of little fish. They mm -hmm. wanted to make a diorama of I had six inch walleyes, I had little bass, I had little smallmouth, little largemouth, okay. and they wanted pedestal mounts on all these little fish. Now I'm not, you know, into micro sounds, fish very yeah, well, however, like... but anyway, so I mounted all these fish, and what am I gonna put them on? You know, any kind of attachment is gonna be, is going to be seen, so, Having used this stuff, there's wires and everything, I got this yeah. bright idea. So I took annealed wire, lightweight mechanics wire, I made a heavy stalk like this, I made little branches. Now, you couldn't put a fish on this, it's too wiggly. But what if you had a heavier wire coming up? Yeah. And then I took copper wire and I wrapped it, and then I painted the entire thing with rubber latex, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden I have a creamy branch, and then I started painting it and sprinkling um, our moss, you sell that moss, right? Mm -hmm. I sprinkled that moss all over it, and you you literally, if you want to, make these. Yep, yep. I mean, we fortunately, we don't have to make them. I think there's them. a little factory these. somewhere with a bunch of people that can't get away making these things. <laughs> okay, now, some of this might be too big. You don't have to use the whole thing. Let's cut this off about right here. Ray Lance says, you can infomercial me. You guys have stuff I need. <laughs> you betcha. Um, anything you want to know about, and everybody here can attest to, if I think it's junk, I will tell you it's junk. And you can save yourself the money. We have to talk you into trying stuff a lot, too. Yes, yes. You are good at that, though, Mandy. It takes way long to get you to even try good products. Okay, I'm just situating this branch, and if it's too big, I can, I can use um, parts of it. I can clip parts of it off. I don't want to bust a fin off. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. I thought of something yesterday that you it's back in stock, Jesse. insisted I used. What'd you say? Jesse wanted to know the last time you called it was out of stock, but it's back in stock. The vines? Oh, are they? Yeah, no, they're just stuck. 
Let's see. I'm not liking what I got here. Now, what you're actually doing here, you're turning yourself into a floral arranger. And you can staple this stuff on once I get it kind of where I, I want it. Um, I think if my choice would be to have a crown stapler. Could you put a little screw right in here yeah. to hold that guy? But since we don't, we're going to put a one inch screw in here. Uh, there. A one inch screw, um, but if you had a crown stapler or a narrow crown stapler, that would probably be the ideal thing. Now I wouldn't want to make him too mossy for a small mouth, but another fine product is uh, we've used sheet moss for years and years and years, the real moss. Yes. Used um, mm -hmm. too, yeah, yeah, I used to uh, buy it from, kids from Wisconsin would gather it and dry it and mm -hmm. box it for us and I'd go to the Wisconsin show and get this sheet moss and um, it was uh, great stuff but any of you that have used sheet moss know that um, it dries out and then it doesn't look so good, you yes. know? And you, you're so proud of a mount when you give it to a customer and then you uh, see that mount a couple years later, not even that, and it looks like a dried up hay field, you know, it doesn't look so good. <clears throat> so we've tried a lot of different things in the past. We used to dye it. it used to be a product called Never Say Die yeah. by Knoblox, I think, probably still carried somewhere. Um, but we used to dye it and we used to dry it and all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to make a black bear scene, you know, walking through the forest. But this is an artificial moss. It's got a backing on it. And if I need moss for anything that wants to stay green, it's going to stay green yep. because it's not a real product. I peel the backing off. You just did a black, no. Um, the, tar. the tar, you did a bunch of moss yep. on the tar. Yep. And then I get rid of, see you got square edges here, straight lines I should say. I get rid of those, stretch it into a little shape other than a man-made shape. Get your fingers clear of the hot glue. Mm. We're going to take a little hot glue and we're going to maybe put, I'm not going to moss this one up very much, I'm going to put a little hot glue up there. With moss, how do you strategically fix it? Um, put it on dry, I think, and then see if you like it. Like Does it, it yeah. grow a certain way on real, where you would put it on the top, the bottom, the left, the right? We the really north side of a tree. I got we, lost a lot of times trying to do that. <laughs> we need to give her a list of questions not to ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, moss can grow about... I think about anywhere, but, but not we on a rolling stone, it. right? Ah, yes. Um, but we use it a lot of times first to camouflage little seams, um, and then we build out from there. So in this case, we've got a hiding screw head. Hiding stuff. Yeah. Hiding stuff. Um, so you can put some strategic pieces here and there, and then build around it. Cover staples, cover screws, um, and then uh, try to get a natural look. Now, the nice thing about this is we have a customer who has um, a perch that he wants us to do, but he wants like two more fish with oh, it, yeah. but he doesn't have the other two fish. So he wants that fish on a big base in hopes of getting the other two. And I said, how about we put it on a base like this that conforms to the fish, it looks mm -hmm. good, but when you come back in with the other two fish, now don't bondo over it if you gotta do that, but we can right. take out the screws that hold him in the back, straighten that rod, pull it off, bigger piece of wood, all three fish go on. It's yeah. real easy, much easier. Um, this will hold pins, staples. Now that vine isn't just for fish, you also, someone, Pat Reed said that he uses it for his bobcat mouth all the time. Yeah, oh, we, yeah. 
-hmm. And same with that moss. I see you're doing it on the fish, but if you look behind to the tar base, that's the same moss that you use for the tar as well, correct? Yeah, mm -hmm. bears, whoops, bears, foresty animals, you know, yeah. Capricallis. Okay, or now can I do it? I think so. You better. Okay, let's tell them about it. I think we did have a, we did have one of our lives with the gloss, right? Yeah, with our you spray want max. To see the back of your shirt. The back of my shirt? Yeah. How did they? What? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know. That's scary. That's kind of one of your designs. That was. That was for our fish on fish forms. Yeah. Is that not cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of fun. Have some on the website. Do we? Mm -hmm. um, that was one of my favorite shirts. All right. Uh oh. Lapel Mike. Go yeah. off the lapel, Mike. Oh. <laughs> Francis wants to know where we're at. We are located in northwest Iowa, right on the border of Minnesota. God's mm -hmm. country. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Don't come visit. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our Spray Max gloss. This is one of those products that Mandy brought to us Dewa. and insisted that we used, and we didn't for a long time. It's scary. It's it scary. scary. If you've never Glossy. done this before, you'll be scared. Yeah. And if you've ever spent a day or two or more painting a fish and then so it comes time to <laughs> then it comes time to gloss, you don't want anything to go bad. Fish prices just went up a lot. Did you know? Oh they yeah, did. You, were, you helped me. Yeah, they did. Um, they went up a lot. Um, why don't you take care of that and I will dress this so that we don't get gloss all over. Ah, prior to that, I'm going to tell you, um, our wood is all um, set with a fixative because these are all hand painted. We have yep. some of the most talented we do habitat artists. I mean, I went down yep. and tried painting this stuff is hard. It is so hard. <laughs> um, I could spend two days doing this and it's not going to look good. And these girls have a system down. Um, this rock is painted separately. That rock, see that little guy up there? Those guys up there, all painted separately, um, different colors. Um, but anyway, we have a very talented um, division that paints that, and they're all sealed with fixative. They're all set with the paints. You can repaint them, but they do have something that'll protect the paint on them. Um, it's a matte surface, so when you wanted something dry, say you wanted a, a some quail or something running through there. That base can be set on a table with oh, reeds absolutely. and stuff yep. like that and put a little three or four covey of quail on there. It makes like the most awesome mount. I was thinking candles for the centerpiece of like a Christmas. I want dinner. you to do that really bad because that is the best idea. We're always going to have a contest. You should have it with your oh, yeah. um, customers. Whoever can come up with the ho best holiday creation um, there's some cool ideas people do. But anyway, um, so I want this a little bit glossy, but I don't want it as glossy as a fish. That's just me. Mm -hmm. You know, you can pick up, you can gloss it real heavy also. Um, so I took just a Krylon gloss, clear glaze. Show them the different glazes while we're at it here. There's, this is the one I sprayed on. This is a shiny, shiny gloss by Krylon. We also have it in matte. We have it in a matte. And yes, we do. do have we? it in a satin. My favorite yeah. ever is the satin because I like to use it on deer eyes. And if you think your mounts look good before you peel the rubber off the eyes, um, stand back and give them a of satin, and really, they're gonna okay. bugle. Well, there you yeah. go. The satin is in stock. I know, I saw it. I was real excited. Um, matte finish, if you want something flat, these are pre finished in a matte. Um, I wanted them just a little bit on the glossy side. I just took the gloss aerosol. Okay, here's what I did I did this. I went, ah, oh, no, I got it way too glossy. I looked around, I grabbed a terry cloth towel, and I just touched it to it and marred the finish, and it gave me a low luster. Just don't leave terry cloth threads all over the place. Yeah. Make sure there's nothing caught in your towel. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You keep going. What am I doing? Um, you're going to make that stuff. Oh, OK. So this is our Spray Max. This is a high solids urethane. We have always sprayed through an automotive sprayer. Um, but this came to us. 
and is exactly the same product that we spray through our big sprayer, but rather than having to clean and maintain the spray guns, um, it's available in an aerosol. So pretty simple to use. We are taking from the top this red activator piece, take it right out. We're gonna put it on the bottom. There's a little spot down here on the bottom. Get it started there, and then we're just gonna push it down like so. I think you have to hit it just to be sure. Are you sure it did it? No. Yep. I can feel it. It <laughs> depresses now. So, and then they ask you to, to shake the can. So, so you got a good minute of shake. And what it's done is there's a canister in the bottom that is separated from the rest of the of the material. So we've just punctured the catalyst. So now these two need to be shaken so that your catalyst gets into your gloss thoroughly. So we'll try to do that as quietly as possible. Now the spray max is not found on, on, in the catalog, but you can get it online. So Mandy's gonna shake that a little bit further away from the microphone just so we don't uh, drive everybody crazy. <laughs> shake it, shake it, shake it. And you've got that all protected? Well, now again, this isn't how we gloss our fish. Typically, um, the fish would be on the stand, we gloss them, the yep. next day we come in and put them on their habitats or backboard, whatever we're gonna do with them. Um, the only reason we did this is to try to expedite this so you can see the finished product and we don't have to go to session eight. <laughs> and I think that will be greatly appreciated. Buy some. You want me to lower it down for you? Um, sure. You want to go do flat? Um, yeah. Or you, do you want to see it? I think we want to see it. All right, I think you I do want it. to see it. Um, we'll just give this uh, two coats of gloss, just as we would with the, with the automotive gloss. We'll give it one quick flash coat um, for it to tack up, and then we'll come back and give it another. So. Um, this has, this gloss, excuse me, I'll stick Tell her if you want the fan. Um, we might need the fan, but hopefully not. Um, we're gonna give it a quick gloss, like so. Now why would you do that? Um, and that is, idea behind it is to give it one quick shot that's going to set and kind of tack up. And the next coat will be the heavy coat and we'll actually grab it and hopefully keep the next coat from uh, running, I think. That's what I've heard. That's the idea. <laughs> and <laughs> That's um, the it's behind also it. a good idea to give a light coat and let it start to tack so that, you, so that your paints are protected too. Um, that way we've got just a little bit of protection for your, for your uh, first layers of paint. Got just a little dust. Now, back. once you go. do this, you punctured that can. Is it a goner after today? Um, not after today. It will eventually be a goner um, just because the catalyst act can. I think the can says 48 hours. We've done, oh like man, a, yeah. yeah, nearly a week, yeah. if not a week. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, try to get all of your projects lined up so that you're within a day or two but we had really good success several days later. I know you kept pulling the can out of the garbage and spraying it and it <laughs> kept working. Um, but that's probably all we would wanna do with the, with the first coat. You can come back and give it a second. We normally will give it a heavy coat and then Tom likes to lay them on their side so that if you do have any runs, it will run toward the back rather than it have any runs this way. So. Should we do that? Sure. Should we give it a heavier coat? Let them see it and then we'll lay it flat. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, now, um, do you ever do the habitat as well or no? Um, you could if you want a shiny you habitat. Sure. You could. What's preference over that or not? I, I don't know. I, like, I kind of like the fish to be the shiny object of the, I don't want the habitat yeah. flat, but I prefer not to have it be wet too. 
So you wouldn't use like a mat or a... I use that. I use that. You Gloss. Do on the habitat. Soft, yep. but softly. Soft. And Jesse wants to know, how many cans of that would you need to do a 51-inch muskie? Oh, gosh, you could do You'll three. You'll do, or yeah, at least a couple, three muskies with one per can. can. Yeah. Yep. This can will do probably eight to ten fish of this size. You can see how little we've put on there. I can barely tell that I've that I've lost any volume did, just by we weight. We did like four the last can we had and yeah. we wasted half a can I think. Yep. Yep. And I know we've gotten six prior um, in that other batch of walleyes. We had a couple of nice sized northerns. Um, but dollar for dollar compared to mixing it, um, this is a pretty reasonable product. It doesn't, it's not and, expensive to use. Um, comparatively to the Crystal oh, Clear Glaze, because I know a lot of people like to use the Krylon product, um, we have pretty much achieved our final gloss with what you just saw go on. With the Crystal Clear Glaze, I would prefer to put on four or five you lighter coats. You go through a coats. can almost, you, won't you? Yeah, you'll go through a lot more of this product. So this will save you, um, save you cost as well. So over ideally, the you would have ways. multiple fish lined up and ready yep. to spray at once. Yep, absolutely. Have. Yep, yep. And I'll give it just a little dust here on the backside too. Anybody see any flat spots? Are there? Is there any <laughs> spot that I missed? You're right back here. There. Get him. And this, um, one of the things that you'll notice with the crystal clear glaze or other aerosols is, is they like to dry spray. Um, so as you lay gloss on top of itself, your second coats um, from an angle, if you get any overspray, sometimes that will go on dry. Uh, this doesn't seem, it will still do that, but this doesn't seem to go nearly as bad. Oh, you did pretty um, good. Maybe a little right okay, there. Okay, right there, yeah. Um, Chef is wondering the cost, and if it's in stock, it is $25.95, and the cost is 1103, or the item number is 110368. And again, it's not in the catalog yet. You'll see it in the 2021 yeah. catalog, yeah. but it is online under what's new, or you can type in Spray Max. Yep. Pop up. Shep Brown, that'll make the shiniest rattlesnake you'll ever see in your life. <laughs> How about alligator? Alligator <laughs> head. Gloss all alligator, over alligator, alligator heads. Alligator, eat them up. Can we take it off? Carefully. And hey, tell them about how this dries. Um, Time-wise? Yeah. Uh, it sets up pretty fast. It does. It, it catalyzes, so it's catalyzed, so mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not a traditional air dry, so the temperature, humidity, and so forth in the room is going to make a difference, but we run the air conditioner in here all the time. It's probably, what, 72, 73 degrees, just average room temp. And um, gosh, this will be fairly well tacked over in, what do you think, a couple hours? Yeah, yeah. two yep. hours you can probably manhandle that almost. Yep. almost. Yep. Can I just cut this so we don't yeah. damage something? Normally we would let this sit overnight or but at least for a few hours. We're in a hurry and we're anxious to see this work of art for you guys. Oops, I guess I don't want to do that. Do I? I want to go up. Cut this. Oh, that's your finger. Ah. I'm so sorry. Those Wesnips. Good, aren't they? Now, like I said, we typically wouldn't do it like this we would gloss the fish on its stand. And then come back and add him later. But, and that's gonna be nice. You know, it's gonna be really nice. Seven weeks to do a smallmouth bass <laughs> like that, we should go into business because I think, I think we but can we make a living at this. we did just raise our prices. <laughs> now, um, with that wire assembly in there, now we've done other things. We've done threaded rods. You can do threaded yep. rods on this. Yep. And we do threaded rods with um, big fish like muskies and northerns. Any of the big pieces of wood, I think, have a double three yes. quarter inch yep. or, you know, they got a pretty thick core. So if you pick the center of that wood, um, you're going to be able to countersink that. Um, we take a, a bigger spade bit and washers and lock washers 
and we countersink that bolt back there yeah. and then cut it off and then sand it flush. Um, the wire for me is the way to go on this size of fish. It's just the fun wire to work, would work with. Great, you know, they could even do the square rod. Sure, oh yeah, um, yeah, that yeah. That would be a good attachment here. Um, you'd do it the same way. And um, we also have the big pedestal, the big uh, yep. uh, composite pedestal, the square pegs. We'd Those use that on well. big fish as well, too. Does that head still come off? Hope not. <laughs> no, Hope not. <laughs> um, Matt West says it almost appears as if you know what you're doing. It looks great, guys. Um, uh, thanks, speaking Matt. of the head coming off, I know in the past a lot of people have had issues with a lot of people used to cut the heads off of their real fish so that they mm -hmm. could clean them up better, get them really cleaned up good. And then they would put them together a lot of times with a crack. They uh, crack in time. Yeah. A lot of people use artificial heads, put them together, and they crack in time. What would you, what kind of advice would you give to those people that occur, cracks occur between artificial and real parts? Um, I would seal both sides. I'd seal your, your skin side, make sure that you've got that wiped down really nice, um, nicely. And then we use epoxies rather than Bondo. Bondo can be a little bit prone to cracks. Yep. Um, we use five minute epoxy on, on this one to attach it. Had really good luck with that. And we've used um, Fix It Sculpt, which is a, a very high end, um, strong, has a real strong adhesion. Um, for yep. blending that seam. Anything that I'm missing? Um, Magic Smooth, PC7 oh, yeah. you mentioned yep. once, you know? Yep, pc is another good one. Magic Smooth is a great epoxy. We have that around all the time. I made the mistake once upon a time when I first got into taxidermy and I thought I could do a fish pretty darn good and I was pretty proud of them. And I would started using Bondo on the back of my Oh, big yeah. fish. Then I'd take the sander, I'd rasp it off, and I'd sand, sand it with the sander, mm -hmm. and it made a really pretty seam. Seal it, paint the fish and everything. I was so proud of my fish, I guaranteed them for life. <laughs> How stupid was that? <laughs> 25 years later, I still have people coming in <laughs> saying, yeah, sure glad you guaranteed this for life. It's the back of the fish that's been hanging on the wall. All the fins are busted off. Could you fix that seam? You know, <laughs> went on forever. Lori Bell, yeah. since you now have your seven episodes of fish done. What's on next week's agenda? I um, think we're gonna what um, alter some forms. Yeah, yep. We've talked about making alterations to um, like shoulder mannequins. Um, just turn, turn them into pedestals and wall yep. pedestals. Yep. Maybe talk a little bit about how to alter sizes for size and shape and pose. Um, It'll probably yeah. be maybe a three or four part series, I'm thinking. We can cover heads. I'm thinking turning wall mounts into pedestals. You know, a lot of you um, that haven't had the experience, you'll get a wall mount and instead of, it fit perfect, but you want a wall pedestal. And yeah. instead of using that and spending, you know, it might take you an hour and a half, two hours to turn it into what you need. Instead, they order one and that one goes on the shelf somewhere and never gets used. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna show you how to do wall pedestals. And that might be yeah. three or four sessions. Yeah. So you tell us you're tired of that, and then we'll move on. <laughs> what are you giving away today? A vine. Oh, good one. A vine. But I think you used it. I did use the, <laughs> I used the giveaway, but I'll give you a brand new one, a vine, one of my favorite products. What if they want that one? I, I already cut it up. I'll give them a brand new one. I got the other piece. Uh, these vines are kind of handy too, you know. Say you want a little, we have those little bait fish. Don Frank makes those yeah. cool little chase, we call them chase fish because something's always chasing them. Um, you can bring this baby out like that, like so. You can take one of them little chase fish minnows. Come on, Ben, for me. Chase fish minnows, and you can fasten it right on there. Yeah. Works really good. Yeah. And the winner of that is James Caldwell. So congratulations. Congratulations, James. Yeah. Make sure to like and share, like and share this video so you are in next week's drawing. And that's all I have. So stay tuned, give us a call if you have any questions. Um, if you do call in and get the ladies just some, and you were wondering about the spray max, you can just ask them and they will know what you're talking about, hopefully. Depends which one you get, maybe. But <laughs> <laughs> give it a go if you're looking for that, otherwise it is online only right now. Um, give us a call at 1-800-488-3256.
or visit us online. And we'll see you next week. Thanks yes. for joining us. Come again. And don't forget that all these products are 15% off till tomorrow Ooh, at 11.59 p.m. So Ooh, I'm going to get some. Even the spray yeah. max, spray max, gloss, spray max. Ooh, for lines Ooh. that I did not approve Drift that. <laughs> What's that? The spray max. <laughs> Hotel Chef. Yeah, don't forget that. Take advantage. Um, the code for that is FBOOK15. So, and there's actually a collection on our website that is all the nope, products good. that they use. Looks good. Um, so take advantage of that. Yeah, Chef can get it for, there you, you go, gave Chef. him a price. Yeah, a yeah. couple of them.